What's up, guy? With uh, the Nautilus, drydocks.com. It is Saturday, September the 3rd at uh, 11 a.m. Central. Uh, it's a cloudy day here in Texas, but it's not as hot as it uh, used to be. And we are in the middle of uh, our first uh, inaugural build party here at the Dry Docks. We've got a little crew of people in the back, and uh, we're going to stream live here for about the next hour or so. We'll see how this goes. So let's walk into the back, and we'll see what everybody's up to. Here is the crew in the back. We can we we probably gonna get more people coming up a little later. I'm thinking we're gonna, we're gonna go through one at a time. Everybody can introduce who 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 are you and what do you have here today? Uh, Greg Hemp and I've got a 148 scale uh, Boyo class submarine. It's going to be the uh, USS Bofin. USS Bofin, and you you've had this for a long time, right? And you're you the hull in 1978. Had its maiden voyage in 1979, and was running it off and on until about '94. Then I set it aside for a little upgrade, and only 25 years later, it's time to finish it. Finish it. So, what what is your goal today? What do you want to get done today? Uh, the motors installed, the uh, dog bones in, and work on the ballast tanks. And uh, I'm changing over from a water pump system, where I pump the water in and out of the tank. Mm -hmm to a uh, air system and uh, ballast tank vent. You so. bet. Yep. Very cool. Very cool. We'll come back. We'll come back a little later okay. on. All right, Ed. Hey. Hey. hey, everyone. Sub Ed here. Um, mm. I am working on a very old Crick U25. Um, as you all know, it's I a wooden boat. I, I don't know that I've ever actually seen one of these in person, but these are this is all like machined out of wood, right? Yes, it comes as three planks that basically square with the cutouts. You laminate them together, and then you carve the hull with a set of forms. And, Holy um, cow! It was a dynamic diver, so obviously you have to trim it to decks a wash. But in this particular case, it came with uh, the original kit came with these very thin plat. Uh, shafts and plastic um, propellers that were basically in a stuffing box and the grease at, the, at depth would squeeze that through. So I've actually changed it to metal propellers, one eighth inch shaft with proper shaft seals. She's upgrading from brushed motor to brushless motor. Look at that. With differential speed control. Now I know Bob always says, hey, won't work on a boat length like this but i'm here to experiment i have the parts why not mm -hmm. it's going from that um that that old seal it had if everybody remembers this this would seal the boat this way with this gasket and you put tons of grease on it i'm going to use a clear lexan cover that'll be a little more permanent because access oh make some little access hatches there you go be through a couple just to dry it out and I'm debating whether I'm going to use the original hardware or just use RTV. Uh, RTV. RTV. Yeah. You slap it on, mm -hmm. and you could use a little razor to pop it off. There you go. But that's it. And she's getting a complete makeover, including uh, detailing. I scribed in torpedo shutter doors. I added weld marks. I retooled the, the rudder to be more authentic to the boat. Nice give it more of a realistic look. It was originally owned by Jim Butt, purchased uh, uh, by Joe Oliver, and now I have it. And the, the idea behind this, I think you were saying you, you want to make this kind of like a, like a, a beginner's hand-on boat yeah. for events and stuff, this, right? This way you have somebody who doesn't understand the principle, you give it to them, you teach them that they only need speed, a set speed, and a set angle on the bow planes in this whole PD pretty darn well. And it's, and it's pretty bulletproof. Like, you could probably pretty charge at full throttle into a concrete wall. It probably wouldn't do too much, I, would I it? I did. I noticed the, the forend um, was dented back a little, so I replaced it. There's a 
brass plate in there. There you go. And filled with um, something called Marine Tech. Very and, cool. Yes, it's it's quite bulletproof and it's positively buoyant. So can't get into too much trouble with no. it. And it's perfect for somebody who doesn't understand the hobby when they walk up and you're at the lake or your regatta or a fun run. You say here. Mm -hmm. This is forward, reverse, left and right. Dive, have fun. There you go. Nice. Cool. All right. Some of you guys might know this guy. What's up, everybody? Uh, anybody knows, watches the videos, knows that uh, Bob's beloved League of Extraordinary Gentlemen boat uh, crashed and burned in the wind. Took a so, took a header off a six foot shelf. Yeah. yeah. So I am here trying to revive her from the dead. Yeah. Doing my best with what I can do. Yeah, that was a cool boat. I was sad, but not sad because, like, at because it's what like three, well, like three Five feet. I would love to do it at like six or seven feet. Ooh, that would be awesome. Nice. The size of a real broadsword. Yeah, <laughs> so hopefully you see in the near future that it's uh, back together and back on the shelf. And there we go. Cool. All right. Last but not least, who are you and why are you here? Uh, I'm Alan Palmer, and uh, this is my 196 scale Los Angeles. And I've been building it for the past three or four months, seriously. Um, so I'm just here trying to get my cylinder fit. Um, the hole is a bayonet style, so it's kind of a little bit harder to get it in. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, we're working on a solution right now and trying to get everything functional before subfest. That's right. Subfest coming up in, what are we at, like a week and a half or something now, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right, and then uh, I'm picking away at stuff here too. Look, my, my real estate's being taken over. That's not cool etiquette. This is my uh, um, scale Bruce from Jaws. And um, if things go well, it's going to have a, an articulating tail for realism. And uh, it is to scale with my Orca. And then, so he, this is going to be a fully dynamic diving um shark that will be able to chase the orca around and uh, i'm hoping i'm hoping we'll have it ready for subfest that's pretty ambitious considering the state of things right now but we'll see he's a smiley shark so for those of you who are here um thank you for joining us what we're gonna do um i'm gonna try and keep my eyes open for comments um it's a little challenging because I'm just working off my phone. Um, and then what uh, I'm going to do is just put the camera up uh, above the workbench and we're just going to talk and uh, build. All right, I'm just going to scroll through some of these. Let's see here. Yes, Travis, you should have stopped by if you were in spring. Sheesh. And Rick, that flying sub, that's a, that's a customer's build. Um, that is going to be sort of the prototype for the full conversion kit that uh, I'm coming up with. Now, it's not going to be as like um, robust a build as yours, but uh, it's going to be simple and economical uh, for anybody that wants to convert these. So I'll have a conversion kit. It'll come with the pumps. Uh, you can see here. On my printer, I've got 3D printed mounting brackets for uh, a custom watertight cylinder that's going to be in there. So that's the, the test bed for the conversion kit for the flying sub. Um, all right, who did I forget? Do, 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 do. Um, we got a lot of actually really cool 3D printed boats that are good for beginners. Um, but the, the Mobius Skipjack is actually a really good one. Yeah, Riverbell Skipjack, very good. That would be a good plan. All right, I'm going to put this up here. If I don't get to your comments right away, I'm going to take a break and I'll come back from time to time. And uh, that's the 
the bridge that goes on top of Good stuff. Good stuff. You've never done that? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> you may have a portable one or a portable one. I have a portable one. Do you see what we're doing? Okay. So, yep, yep. Like this, boom, and then it's going to slide in like this. Beautiful. And then that sleeve right there, yeah, kind of with a little bit of an adapter to hold it center. Beautiful. I did. <laughs> this is and this is the idea. Like it, you know, the tail will will, will, right. will swish back, there. but but the the propulsion is going to come from fin mounted motors. So I'll have differential steering, and then as you. Do the differential, the tail's gonna swish it back and forth like this. That's fantastic. Chase people or you could just go for speed and just goose both motors and jump them up out of the water and stuff. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> That's fantastic. Are you gonna make him available? I mean, I, Why not? I could make the files available, yeah, but the engineering is gonna be is gonna no, be interesting. No, dollars to donuts. Some somebody will. Purchase it, and if you do a kit for it, dollars the donuts. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Now, come on, how many Ludwigs are gonna want to run that around that in the pool with their wife's in it? <laughs> <laughs> uh. I mean, if it wasn't if it wasn't gonna be to scale to my orca, I would have built him like twice as big. Yeah, because this is this is gonna be interesting. I'm digging out all the. 3D printed supports inside these parts. Yeah. What material is this? This is just PLA, but it's so thick, I mean, it's... Plus, he'll be gray, right? Yeah. Dark gray. Yep. We got Hunt for Red October going on in the background. Some inspirational, motivational. Since we have an LA right in front of us. Dallas, Dallas was a flight one, wasn't she? Yes. Yeah, I'm sure. Um Oh, man. Don Meadows served on her. Oh, really? Yeah, Don Meadows served on the battle. Um, so for, for those of you who don't know him, Don, or Don, Dave Merriman is a fixture in our our sea submarine community. He did a lot of the filming miniatures for Hunt for Red October. I mean, that would be cool to have on your resume, seriously. Yeah. I remember um, Don won the uh, probably one of the most prized raffle pieces ever was uh, a divorce to say this. Oh yeah. And I can't tell you, you know, Don will not admit how many tickets. <laughs> how many he bought? <laughs> but I remember asking him afterwards, how did they receive it on the gallery? He won it. The cop and he goes, well, the cop said it's we have a heck of a setup. The there you go. There you go. Can I go? off. This is what my brother's trying to build. It's like his favorite character is Captain Tuval. I don't know for why. And that was 96 scale, right? Yeah. That's a thing, right? In the fact that the prop is turning backwards. 
Don't nitpick. But not recommended. One of the coolest lives ever. You guys seen this stuff from from Starbond? This is white CA. White CA. White CA. What's the advantage of it? Other than well, if you're working on white stuff, then it blends, I guess. I got black. I got brown. Thin, medium, thick. So it's merely color. You don't find it's any color. no mechanical advantage. No. No, no, nothing like, like the that. rubberized CA, yeah, is it really rubberized? There's rubble. I find it's got more give to it. More give to it. It's less brittle. Yeah. Okay, so it's more a visual thing than anything else. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, the, the white was designed for um, ceramics. Okay. Yeah, that's what that was all about. back and forth like this. How are you making out? Pretty good. Gotta clean it up for sure, but you can use this for that. Everybody out in TV land is just missing the fun here. I know. Yeah. It, it, there's nothing more fun than a group of guys sitting together just doing their day. Uh, this is a little tip. I don't know if you guys need to do this a lot, but if you're like fitting a diving plane or something like that and you're trying to put a control rod in it, rather than banging it through, if you chuck it up in your drill, you can spin it and it goes through super easy. Pro tip. Ah. Pro tip. Pro tip. So, and again, another pro tip. I could have easily just run a, like an eighth inch rod through here, but I'm sleeving it with a, a brass tube. And so when I put the control rod through it, it'll be super smooth with no binding. Ed taught me that with the linkages here. Mm -hmm. Same exact thing going on here. Yep, yep. Makes a bearing surface. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, it would be bushing, right?
dust really does get everywhere, doesn't it? What's that? All the dust. Oh my god, you have no idea. <laughs> Part. My favorite, my favorite part was, I told you to speak your mind, but Jesus, Jack. Another pro tip in case there's anybody else out there right now, um, when you cut the brass tube, there's always going to be burrs inside. I just take the hobby knife, wrap it around, and that gets rid of all the burrs. We cut a lot of tubing here. <laughs> a lot of tubing here. I still say the most exciting video is Jason handling those pseudo pieces. <laughs> <laughs> that was so Bugs Bunny-esque. <laughs> yeah, I got in trouble when I go home. Hey, what do you do for you? Grown up, grown up, no supervision. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, if you just build this for me, that'd be awesome. <laughs> I should be working on customer builds, but it's Saturday. And I never get to work on my own stuff. Never. Side cutters? Oh, they're right there. Do you want big ones, little ones, finished yeah. ones? You see, when you need a tool, this is where you come to build. <laughs> Perfect. If you want to grab the camera and just walk around, Jason, you can do that. Make sure you get up in Ed's face so that he gets like super nervous. Hey, and... nervous. <laughs> Ed, why why are you doing that, Ed? That doesn't look safe, Ed. I think it's coming out. You can look at my ugly face all day. There we go. You can check the comments too if anybody's saying anything worthwhile. Let's scroll back up. How about using a water jet to propel Bruce? See, now I thought about that. I was going to use these, right? Um, which, I mean, is super possible. They'll fit. The, the issue I was worried about was, was weight. Um, the plastic is roughly the same density as water, so that's not a big concern of mine. But once I put these two pumps in, which I still might do, I don't know, I don't know. we'll figure it out. Um, because I want differential thrust, right, left and right. Uh, I was just worried I'm going to have too much weight in there. So my, that's plan A. Plan B is going to be little brushless motors mounted uh, in the in the pectorals with some propellers. 
I don't know. We'll see. I gotta get the tail working first. <laughs> Uh, what servo would we be using for the tail or would it be a motor? Curious how you're going to make that work. So the, the tail isn't controlled by a servo. It's just, you know what? Here. Don't go anywhere. Stand by. That is a nice looking boat. So this, this is what I was inspired by. It was like 30 bucks on Amazon. It's so much fun. But you can see they got these little motors in the back here, right? But the, t the tail just flops around. It was like, you know, did you guys ever play with those snakes when you are kids, yeah. the wooden yeah. snakes? Exact same thing. But you just by using differential thrust, it, you can get them to, to swim like, a sh like an actual fish. So I'm gonna add, do one better, and I'm gonna have the, the pectoral fins tilt so it'll be able to dive as well and swim fancy i'm hoping we'll see but yeah if you want a fun toy you're like uh, how much was it 30 bucks you too <laughs> for only the price of 30 bucks can have an rc shark from amazon i was gonna i was gonna have this chase but this is just be like a normal great white shark yeah what's the fun in that yeah yeah i mean if he was if he was that like that big yeah. I would have just painted them and called it good. <laughs> well, wouldn't you just want to chop the stern off the work or something and make it smaller? To maybe so you wouldn't have to do that <laughs> Just cut two feet off. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Now it's scale. Yeah. Take a bite of it. <laughs> <laughs> Shenanigans at Bob's shop today. Total his third year. Actually, this this will be a cool thing for a lot of people to follow because they got lots of questions about how to mount a watertight cylinder in a bayonet style boat. So we'll we'll be making progress on this. Alan, why don't you explain your strategy for? So it's essentially a tray, really. So we're going to mount these two in the stern section, and I've cut a notch here and here that it'll slide into. So like this. And then we're going to have just an adapter, essentially, to make this fit without up and down play in my middle section of the hull. And that should keep it all constrained. Very yep. nice. Yep. Very nice. Got a nice paint job on here. Yeah, you did a really good job on the paint. That was mm -hmm. my first airbrush attempt, so... <laughs> It looks like your appendages, though. You gotta goof around with your yeah, uh, settings on your printer. Yeah, I got some wonky settings on my printer. <laughs> yeah, I've had that printer's had some problems since I had it. It's a work in progress, like everything else. Yeah. Let's go over here and bug Ed for a minute. Hi. <laughs> hey guys. Basically, my goal today is I'm. I'm really doing a rough fit, and because um, I have a couple of unique problems, because I went with uh, brushless, I now have, um, you know, three times many con connectors now, uh, wires needing to run past these two servos. So I'm kind of doing a dry fit, make sure everything fits, and then I'm going to make up wiring harnesses and dress how they're going to come around these two servos. This is a bow plane servo, it's connected to the push rod that goes through this two gear of forward from the bow plane. The stern servo is this, comes through a tube, and uh, the ceiling is merely a silicone tube on the end with an O-ring around it for the push rod. I have uh, two millimeter graphite rods, and I'm actually uh, replacing the old PVC rods, which has broken over time, they dry out. So I have uh, carbon fiber rods I'm going to be using. But I still have to, as you can see, the issue is how do I bring all this wire harnessing forward past this? Because the lid is very tight, and I don't want to jam up everything here. These two motors, since they're outrunners, are spinning, and you also don't want to lay any wiring around the motors to rub against it. That'll cause problems. So I'm thinking of coming back here, looping around, and 
coming across the top or in inboard, maybe an S curve like that, and then break them out to the two speed controls, which will be mounted here and here on either side of the battery. Uh, four channel receiver here, a remote on off switch, and again, I'm going to use a Lexan cover with two, not one, but two access ports. This one here and this one to be able to charge it through too. Um, and if I'm worried about condensation, you can open up one, put a cool hair dryer on the other end, and just run it through for a few So that's really the plan. It's a, a classic boat, you know. Um, I had one, I lost it. I actually wrote an article about that many years ago, but it was because during setup for my dive, I didn't tighten the hat securely because a group of young individuals ran up and I kind of got distracted. I'm not blaming them, I'm blaming myself. Nowadays I have a pre-underway or a rig for dive checklist that I make sure I go through so I don't lose another boat. But through the kindness of another individual, I now have this very classic RC submarine. I'm having fun with it. And again, like Bob said earlier, it's a kind of boat you can give to almost anybody at a regatta. A newcomer can walk in off the street, you can say, hey, take this. Because you know, providing you tighten the, the, the hatches down, you batten the hatches down, you're not going to lose it because it should be positive. Uh, Rick Teske says, call her Old Woody. Old Woody, yeah, okay, Rick. <laughs> Rick, that's my next project. <laughs> He's probably yelling at me because I'm not working on Proteus. <laughs> but it has to be known. Uh, somebody wants to know where you acquired the Orca. I bought that on eBay like five years ago um, as like a quasi-started kit or whatever you want to call it. Um, I have not, it's out of China. I've not seen another one ever listed again. So I'm assuming those guys are long out of business but I mean I, I love it it it's pretty accurate all things considered they did a really really good job and then well, Jason knows I worked on it to get it you know all the cool stuff inside and I got Werner out of Germany to do all the figures for me and so well, you know, it's got lights and smoke and well yeah sound well, it's got sound right I uh, it, didn't I, it have yeah, sound it does look at that this works would it be too much to ask for a shark with the freaking laser beam on its head? <laughs> nice. Probably. No, Romel. Uh, could you make a sea breacher using Bruce? Make a sea. Um, well, in theory, it kind of will be, sort of. Like a sea breacher, that's a, what we did the review on, that thing that's like an underwater sea dew. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, yeah, I mean, you'd want this tail fixed. And then the difference between the Sea Breacher and this is the Sea Breacher has a centrally mounted propeller in the back and then it uses, and it must have a rudder too. I don't know, I haven't seen it underwater, but anyhow, yes, probably, I would say so. What we got going on over here? Got all kinds of stuff going on. Changing the ballast tanks, I gotta come up with a uh, vent valve system to put on it. It's gonna be using compressed air as an emergency blow, and only an uh, air pump system. And, uh, reinstalling the, uh, the motor, having to make extended dog bones. Oh, yep, yep. <laughs> And put it back in the sheet and I get it back into <laughs> running yeah. <laughs> Getting rid of some of the old technology. I mean, oh, yeah, getting, getting the new stuff up in there. The last speed control was about that big. Oh, about Jesus, that tall. Now, the new yeah. speed control is like the size of a stamp. It's the size of a stamp, yeah. So, I'm gonna have a little bit of excess space, to yeah, that, right. And run two 12 volt batteries, just more for ballast. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. 
One charge lasts you about a year. Yeah, right. <laughs> Size my air tank. Uh, any plans on releasing some 3D printable Dutch submarines like the Walrus class? Hey, it's all about demand, right? I've, I've taken on commissions, you know, like Scorpion was a commission. Um, I don't remember what the other one. I think my first one, uh, Redoubtable, was a commission. Um, the issue is the first boat takes like hours and hours and hours and dozens of hours to do and so whoever commissions it has to pay for all that and then I make my money from you know selling the copies so those if someone wants one they can try and ask and I can try and do it in my free time I can get with Randy Sanders he may be able to do something as well but um, it's about it's about demand right those, those boats are super cool, but the, the ones that people want and they're willing to pay for, you know, Typhoon, LA, Alpha, you know, the common the common ones. So that's kind of... Uh, working on the new angle Typhoon, will the watertight cylinder that we have work for it? I don't want to use the stuff that came with the kit. Could be. Hold on. We have company. Hang on. Anybody want to see this big guy? I can set up another table. We got another little table we can set up. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. We'll set up a table for you. Well, I'm going to have to get out of the Cylinder stuff getting made here. All right, let's put you guys back up here. For now. Do you guys have a loop 
for a, a magnification. Like your set of, uh, you, you know those goggles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought we did it one time. I know Bob's got great eyes, but those in our... Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> Should I say advanced modeling experience? I know I've seen a pair. That's kind of cool. Oh, that's awesome. So I'm kind of hesitant to take a building inside of my home, but how do you about how do you go about attaching this? Excellent. That's what's nice about bill parties. And it, and it doesn't have to be a Bob's. I mean, a local group can host them at somebody's house. Like when he came over to my house last week, you know. Do you live in this area? Or? Uh, we're, um, I'm in uh, wa uh, just outside of Wakatachi. Oh. Oh, okay. They say, that now obviously from my accent, I'm not from around this part. Yeah. But my understanding, the unit of measurements in Texas, I'm a day's cattle ride south of Dallas. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay, just south. Just yes, south. Between, yeah, yeah, but between Dallas and uh, Waco, I would say. Okay, yeah. Halfway point. Yeah. And he's an hour and a half, an hour, well, close to an hour and a half? Yep. Further west than that. Oh, okay. So he showed up at my place about 5.30. Mm -hmm. He drove down here. And he drove down here. So I got up and at whatever ungodly hour and go over to his place. You know. that's good, but that's what it's all about. It's yeah. about a couple of guys, you know, we're on our way to a show. We're on our way to a bill party or a tree yeah. party. Yeah. Uh, I left my house at 9.15. <laughs> you left my house at 9.15. <laughs> I got up at like 3.30. Yeah. Which I went to bed at midnight, and then I got up like three. Okay. Yeah. I know there's a pair here somewhere. Those will be my best friend. I think. You could probably get a few pairs here. Oh, yeah. That's a And I work at Chick-fil-A, so I have to um, go on strong every day. Except Sundays. Except Sundays. <laughs> Oh, you're retired. I'm retired. What did you do after you got out? Well, I went to safety. I did two tours in the Submarine Safety Center. Okay. I 
you land on the chart, you can form a civil engineering chart work to chart updating to the drafting And then I just kind of segue into Yeah. Like you are working for the electrical engineer. The electrical engineer comes out with a And he has a logic board. And I do the three dimensions. We're working at that Lockheed Martin. Oh, yeah. You know, it's the fence. A lot of stuff, fun stuff. Best, best place I've ever been in. Yeah. 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 Did all their electronic work. And he's retired naval, naval reserve. He did like World War II. I retired in the Navy and I told him. That's right. So, uh, it was, uh, It's three-dimensional navigation. Yeah. I gotta get the circuit, control the keys, and all the constraints. I have to get from point A to point B, but now 1,200 times. Yeah. On an 18 multi-layer. Right. On an on 18 layer printed circuit board. You know, so it's a lot of fun. I've got a couple of breadboards. Yeah. Circuits I probably use on this at times. Your signal for yes. a set period of time, it froze a couple of servos to a certain position, out of which it's going to be really small. Yeah. Yeah. No complaints. No complaints. Last number. All righty. How would you do this? What do you need? This, like this, stick to this, essentially. How do you do that? Yeah. So would you screw it? Would you epoxy? Wait. Okay. Maybe I misunderstood what you guys were doing. Do you want to get the... I may have two, to be honest, but... I thought it was going to be remote. You can slide it in and out on rails. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. So you want to slide, You want to mount these permanently, and, and this will come through the notches here and slide in? I think that's what he was getting at. Okay. I would want uh, some guide. I would put some kind of guide, either PVC here and here, so that help it line yeah, up. So the rails are permanently mounted in the in circuit. That. Yes. Yeah. And um, I just want this to slide in and align real close. Yes. Honestly, and this adapter is going to be in here too. So, it's, so the cylinder is going to slide in like this, and then the rails are going to kind of grab it. Right. I would bond the rails and hardware backup and then using flathead screws on the outside you know, come in and come in or however you're coming in there just I like a good mechanical backup yeah, yeah. don't rely on glue <laughs> totally no yeah and then you can always fill you can always you countersink them right you can always fill, fill it flush here and here and over. and remember it's always if they're in the water, ten feet away from you. I'm trying to figure out how what's going to be durable. Oh, okay, you got it. Oh, there it fits in your slots. So it's going to be basically right there. That's how my prop shaft is going to work out. Oh, so this, this so this is the end. That that is the clearance you have from here to here. Yeah. Oh, that's that's not. I thought it went in further. No. That's that's so you can still access everything, sort of. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's it. You can you can bomb the heck out of it for now, and then when it dries, you can even come in. You know, here, 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 and here. Four on each one. Come in. Okay. Inside there, and then you can come in with two cap screws. Straight into the square stock. The square stock gives you some, uh, some yeah. teeth. Yeah, it's into. acting ah. right. It's acting like uh, it, even if you don't have to get fancy and tap it because you're not going to remove it. But if you use a, a you just go in from the side. A self-tapping screw. Here, you're trying, here you've got a lot of gap between the curve yeah. and the hole. It's going to act like a, a, a screw, like a, a nut. Mm -hmm. Perfect. 
Yeah, no, we're having a powwow. I need uh, number one, uh, uh, Phillips. Far right. This one. Yep. Number one. Number one. Numero uno. Let's see what we got going on over here. It's got your standard, <coughs> everything on our wall for you. We're, we're wheeling we'll and dealing. We'll the conning fall right out. <laughs> I'm sitting at my table. I'm doing something with screw like that. I go missing. I got a tile floor in, in, in the. In oh, the it could be anywhere then. It'll hit that, and yeah, I'll yeah, find yeah. 10, 15 feet away. Yep, yep, yep. All right, well, I'll tell you what. What we'll do is um, we'll go into top secret negotiation mode okay. uh, without, without the camera around. <laughs> we'll see if we can. We're being kicked out. With a deal. <laughs> I was going to use the brass rod as my mast right. uh, for my antenna, which, oh, that's another thing I can do. I have not extended my antenna wire here. Got to do that. The blue sub near the Nautilus. Oh, this is our blue water boat. This will be dragged behind it. Still in testing. We'll see. Video coming soon. Thirty-second parallel. Yep. Hey Ed, any plans on putting a ballast system in your crick boat? No. No. It it it, it because it's um, it really is designed as a dynamic diver and it doesn't need, you know, it, it's, it, it would be A, difficult, okay, don't really have the room, and, uh, you know, at surface water line, it's about here, and again, it's really meant to be more fun than, than scale operation, you know, again, it, it's a boat you can hand to a user with little or no experience and uh, not lose the boat, you know. Because uh, really, we're talking, I guess, scale waterline is about there. But design waterline or to operate this is about decks wide, if I remember correctly. So, you know, to size the volume, you can see here, if you look internally, I don't have enough, there's not enough room to make it worthwhile. It comes down to any engineering decision you make. Look at your requirements, okay? Uh, the requirements here, could I put one in? Could, it, could I be creative? Yes. Is it worth the time to do that? You know, what's my end requirement? And in this case, 
to have a, a, a ballast system to change from a surface water line to a deck to wash water line is not worth it. It's not worth it. For me. Uh, Floyd, any news on the update on the Baleo? Yes and no. Um, we had some issues with it. Uh, power issues, things were pulling too much power and juice. So we had to go through it, figure out what was going on, get that taken care of. Hopefully uh, get her trimmed back out here shortly. New guns on there. As everybody knows, those things are like two pounds. Now they're two ounces. So, coming soon. Yeah, we've been working on it as much as we possibly can. getting any work done <laughs> it's your idea <laughs> I know it's 12 o'clock anyway so we came we came to a deal and I, I hardly had to hit him very hard at all <laughs> for it so thanks for joining us live hopefully you learned something saw what everybody's working on um, be sure to like and subscribe the videos they help me out a lot there's like this whole Google thing for algorithms for helping with uh, with viewership and that stuff. So make sure you like and subscribe uh, from us at the Dry Docks. Everybody here, thank you for joining us. And uh, we're gonna let you go get on with your weekend. It's Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with anomalousdrydocks.com. Catch you next time. <laughs>